Hello everyone, my name is Jaybird, and welcome back to the sad story of Emmeline Burns. And yes, I am still sick, so that's why my voice sounds weird. <coughs> oh shit. Yeah, I'm dying, guys. I may or may not sound like a guy. I think I sound like a guy. So if I sound like a guy, now you know why. It's because I'm sick. So, anyways, let's just jump into this. Um, it's gonna be a little bit difficult for me to do the voices, but you know what? I'm gonna try, and if it sounds like shit, well, it'll just sound like shit. I'm sorry. Oh, Cornelia, if my heart had not stopped, I am sure it would have skipped a beat. And my, and my own heart is pounding rather uncomfortably, though it does not truly belong to me. I, I hope I'm not causing this young girl any undue strain. You always did worry too much, Nelly. You used to be so scared that your mother would find out about us. You still let me still you still let me kiss you though. Y yes, I, w I was scared, but I I am glad for the time for the time we spent together. Had I known it would be cut short, I would have confessed to you sooner. Say, Cornelia. Yes. What is it? <laughs> I'm afraid I must ask, for curiosity compels me to do so. Was I a better kiss than your husband? Ah, uh, um, well, I... <laughs> it's fine if you cannot answer. It was quite some time since we last kissed one another. Perhaps I... perhaps you need to refresh your memory. I, um, I do not think I would be entirely adverse to that. Ooh. Well then, shall we? Oh my god. My heart pounds, or is it Cornelia's? Perhaps it belongs to both of us. Oh my god. Wow, okay. God damn. Wasn't expecting to get a thumbnail so soon, but alright. Cool. Cool beans, my dudes. Unfortunately, I do not have any liquids to refresh my throat with, so... Fuck. Probably should have didn't grab some before I start recording, but you know what? I'm dying anyway, so it doesn't even matter. <coughs> I don't even have anything in my throat! I mean, my lungs! Fuck! Though she had... So she has been dead some 150 years. Emmeline's lips are soft and warm, sweet and gentle, filled with a dense, deep scent, dense, deep sense of yearning. I wonder how long Emmeline has wanted to kiss Cornelia. How long has she been sleeping in this graveyard, dreaming unfulfilled dreams of a time gone by when she was young and happy and very much alive? Maybe she thought her dream would never come true. That was why she consigned herself to dreaming and did not wake awake from her sleepy stupor, a ghostly girl isolated from the rest of the world. But now she has finally managed to make her dream come true. Is there any reason for her to haunt this graveyard further? Surely all of her regrets have been wiped away, like the spring sunshine, sunshine melting the winter snow. She may never understand her, fa her, her dad's motivations for committing such a terrible crime, but I doubt that was the real regret that kept her body tied to this earth. Instead, it was Cornelia. For Emmeline, it was always Cornelia. Cute. Emmy, you will come back with me this time, won't you? I have been lonely without you. What? I thought you would have been enjoying the peace and quiet. You always did say I was a nuisance. You may have bothered me, but I did not mind the attention. Though I enjoy the calm, it can be rather dull at times. Then I must go with you, without delay. I would never want you to feel like you had been abandoned. That would be far too sad. Y yes, I will be waiting. I have encroached upon this girl's body for far too long, and I should give it back. It would be the proper thing to do. You always did care about the proper thing, Nelly. Evidently, not enough. When it, not when it comes to you. Mother will be so surprised when she learns. I look forward to seeing the expression on her face. I have to sneeze. Are you, I don't think I have ever seen Beatrice Linton surprised by anything before in my life. Yes, well, let us see how it goes, shall we? I would like that more than anything in the world. 
Cornelia smiles, taking Emmeline's hand in her own and squeezes. Cute. I will see you on the other side, Emmy. Please do not tarry. It has been all. Oh, it has already been far too long. Ah. Uh. And with that, I feel myself gradually regaining control of my body. My fingertips twitch, my eyelids blink, and I inhale the cool autumnal air almost greedily, like a drowning maiden resurfacing from the inky black water. My body belongs to me again, and only me. My identity once subs subsumed among Cornelia's ego, like a moon or biting, orbiting, or biting. Wow, I'm sorry, I'm stupid. Okay, I'm sick, give me a break. Orbiting the earth has finally been restored. I never realized it until now, but I really do have an identity of my own. I might be quiet and I might be shy, and my classmates might call me weird, but that doesn't invalidate me as a person. Neither does the fact that Amelia Miller took my name, or the fact that my dad left me when I was still an embryo in my mom's womb. None of that matters. It's all irrelevant! Sorry. It doesn't change the fact that I exist. I am alive. I am the product of all m of my ancestors before me, a whole string of successive relatives <laughs> with, <coughs> with their own stories to tell, and I have a story of my own. How could I throw my identity away? It may not fit me perfectly, but it's the only one I have. If I don't like it, all I need to do is create another. I have that power. Why did I never realize it before until it was wrested away from me by a restless memory of a girl long since dead? The old saying must be true, you never realize what you have until you lose it. Verity, thank you for helping me. You have no idea how much it means to me. I am really, I really am glad that I met you, though I was never, never able to learn your name. My name, is it? A name that belongs to me. I straighten my back, inhale a lung full of air, and declare, My name is Toma Andrews. It's a pleasure to meet you, Emmeline. Toma? What a cute name! C cute The only other person who says that is Haiti. Everyone else thinks it's weird. Well, maybe... Well, maybe I shouldn't say that. Nellie will get jealous. I think it is a perfectly charming, though... I think it is perfectly charming, though. Why did you not wish to share it with me? I, I'm not entirely sure. I was embarrassed. Embarrassed by your name? That's right, but I think I've realized something. I don't want to be embarrassed anymore. Well, maybe I was able to teach you something, too. That was another one of my dreams. Your dreams? Yes, I did so love English literature, and I would have enjoyed being a tutor. That might have been somewhat difficult given the period I lived in, but it seems times are starting to change. Emmeline looks down at my school skirt, and I feel myself flushing. Why is my skirt such a point of public interest? It isn't that short, is it? If Emmeline and Cornelia are scandalized by my skirt, they should should see Emmeline. Emily Hairgreaves. That would knock them unconscious. I hope you have a pleasant life, dear Toma. When the time comes, you will have to tell me all about it. Don't worry, I will. Uh, I'll go on all kinds of adventures, and I'll get some stories. Real stories to share with you. I can't wait. It seems like the next century is going to be very interesting indeed. And with a cheerful giggle, Emmeline's body begins to disappear from this world. Oof. I watch as she fades away until she becomes nothing more than a memory. I pinch my arm. It hurts. It, it, it guess, it guess this wasn't a dream after all. I guess this wasn't a dream after all. I really did meet a ghost called Emmeline Burns, and I really did meet my long lost ancestor, Cornelia Linton. My mom would be so jealous. A silly smile rises to my lips despite myself, and I can't help but giggle. I don't know if my body has ever felt this light. I can't... Well, I can take a screenshot of this, but it's not gonna turn out so well. It's gonna be cropped all fucking weird, because... I hate it when it... At the top, it always fades to white, because the top... Because I always play my games in windowed mode, because that's how it's supposed to record. And so that the top bar is always white, and so I just... I don't know where it ends and where, where the game ends, and... 
whatever, I'll just guess. Not like I'm using this for the thumbnail or anything. I need to keep going forward, so no matter what happens, I should try to be more like Emline, who didn't give up on her dreams even after sh even after she died. I could use some willpower power like that. It's probably because of that strength of will that Cornelia fell in love with her. Who wouldn't? Despite her sad story, Emmeline Burns really is beautiful. I hope that I, Tama Andrews, a recovering victim of identity theft, can someday be as beautiful as her. A lifetime remains. Achievement unlocked. What? Oh god, I'm gonna co get copyright strike for this. Okay. I think there's gonna be a bonus thing too, right? That was so abrupt. Oh! 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 Wow! Oh, okay! Ooh! I'm looking cute though! Creep it real. That's adorable. It's really coming down fast. The sky over overhead is a steely slate gray, completely overcast with clouds. The rain falls down in an endless stream, being mercilessly beating mercilessly against the ground. This is just great. The curls are going to fall out of my hair. At least we were able to get our shopping done before it started. I suppose so. It's so dreary though. Katie frowns, filling with one of her curls with the tip of her index finger. She must have spent a long time on those curls this morning. Katie's something of a perfectionist, so she spends a long time on everything. Her handwriting is incredibly neat, an elegantly flowing script that wouldn't look out of place in an 18th century manuscript. But it takes her a small et eternity to do all her schoolwork. Sadly, the dampness in the atmosphere has taken a toll on her curls, and they no longer look as curly as they did a few hours ago. H Hades' hair has been deflating slowly throughout the day, but this sudden downpour must have been the last straw. It's all right, Haiti. I am. Um... I pause, shifting. The plastic bench is cold beneath the exposed backs of my thighs, and it bites through the thin fabric of my socks. I shiver. Maybe I should have worn something more season appropriate, but I didn't think it was going to rain this much. I didn't even bring an umbrella. I know it was foggy this morning, but it's been foggy every single morning these last two weeks, and it didn't rain then. I guess I was just unlucky. I still think it looks nice. You do? That's right, you, um, you're very pretty, you know? Haiti blinks. She looks a little perplexed, but only for a few moments. Where is this coming from? Do you feel guilty about the money? Oh, uh, no, it isn't that, really. Well, I wonder. You don't need to feel indebted. I've told you, man I've told you enough times. It's only five pounds. You can pay me back whenever. Or you can keep quiet about it until I forget. Whatever works for you. Does anyone actually do that? Keep quiet about money until people forget? I'm kind of guilty of this. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm guilty of that. Don't lie to me! You're guilty of it too sometimes. Maybe. I don't know you. I, you don't know me, I don't know you. And these are just general statements that are true. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me for a second. I've been coughing up mucus all day. It's very gross. I I'd never do that. That's wrong. I'll pay you back no matter what, even if I have to sell off one of my kidneys. You'd go that far? Give them sell off the bad one. <laughs> I have a I have a kidney that's twenty five percent scar tissue, so it's kinda kinda useless, I guess. So, uh, 
If I was selling a kidney, I'd sell that one first. <laughs> I don't need it, honestly. If I could find anybody willing to make an offer. <laughs> you so devoted, like a puppy. This is why I don't mind lending you money. I trust you. Thank you. No, thank you. I didn't do anything to be thanked for, though. My mother always says honesty is the best policy. It should be, it should be the only policy. I wish everybody was as pure as you, Toma. Aw. Hades always lending me money. Her parents are a good, I, good deal richer than mine, and I think she feels kind of guilty about it. I appreciate it, but I wasn't talking about the money earlier. I wanted to pay her a genuine compliment because it's how I genuinely feel. I find it hard to express myself sometimes, though. I've been friends with Haiti since we were both in primary school, but I'm still bad at expressing myself around her. Maybe that's because this last year or so, I've begun to regard her as something more than just a friend. I wonder if it was inevitable. I mean, she's the only real friend I have. We always sit together and lunch, and we group together in PE, and we and we have sleepovers at each other's houses. <laughs> Since I see so much of her, oh god, see so much of her, it might be natural that I started to like her like that. There isn't anybody else for me to get attached to. I'm too shy to talk to other people, so I don't have many choices. I know some of the girls in my class have crushes on celebrities, actors, and singers, and sports stars, but I don't really understand that. How can you like somebody you've never even met? You don't know anything about them. Katie is the only person of my age I feel particularly close to. There must be more to my feelings than that, though. Katie's pretty, she, and she's kind. And she makes me laugh! She likes romance stories, and she she's read Jane Eyre about four times. And she loves Kit... Kits... 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 What? Kits... She... Kits... She places, like those old-fashioned photography parlors where you get to wear ruffled dresses and act like Victorian ladies. She doesn't think it's weird that I like to spend time in graveyards. Maybe that's because her interests are similarly old-fashioned in a slightly different way. When Haney learned I cut school last Friday because I was loitering in the cemetery, she just nodded her head and said, Oh God, Mom, my nose is fucking up. Sorry, give me a second. I need more tissues. I hate being sick. <laughs> oh, God. Ugh. That sounds like you, Toma! Haiti understands me, at least I th like to think she does. I hope sh I can understand her, too. Just a little bit. I wonder if that's what love is, understanding somebody else. That might be why I've found it so hard to love myself. I had no idea who I was and only vague hopes about who I wanted to be. But well, that's in the past now. At least I hope it is. <clears throat> you know, you've been acting a little off lately, Toma. Off? Haiti nods. Like, not in a bad way, just a bit different, that's all. D do you really think so? Yeah, I mean, you actually skipped school for one thing. I never would have expected it of a mortal student like you. M my mother didn't expect it either. She was kind of mad about it. I don't really know why I did it. I just felt, com I felt compelled. Like you heard some divine voice telling you to ditch school? N no, not like that. It's more, um, I had a feeling. Not that I'm a psychic or anything. Where am I? Could I have mystical powers of some sort given I was able to see and speak to a real ghost? I'm not sure. I feel like you've become a bit bolder too. Bold? There's no way. I still get anxious when I have to order food in McDonald's. My hands start to shake and my voice goes all croaky. Do you think the cashier cared that much when you wanted an apple pie? 
I don't think he cared about me at all. But it didn't make any difference. It's not logical. People rarely are shy people doubly so. I know this only too well, having been shy all my life. You still manage to order it for yourself, though. You usually ask me. Well, I thought... I thought... Mm, I shouldn't rely on you all, all, all the time. All the time. I mean, you did lend me the money to buy those boots. I gave you a fiver. It hardly broke the bank. And that's another thing. You wanted those boots for months, but you never bought them. Why the sudden change of heart? I don't know. I thought if I want to do something, I should do it. Life's too short to waste it, wanting to do things, but being too worried. You never know when it might end, just like Emmeline's did so unexpectedly. I think that's something I learned after meeting her. I was living my life like a shadow, always hiding myself away in corners, trying to draw as little attention to myself as possible. That's not how I want to live, though. It's not how Emmeline lived, even though she existed in a period where women were expected to shut up and behave. SHUT UP, WOMAN! Make me a sandwich! I wish I had someone who could make me a sandwich right now. Or a soup or something. I'm sick. I need someone to come over and take care of me. I mean, I'm not bedridden, but I mean, I can lie in my bed and say that I'm bedridden. Someone make videos for me! <laughs> Just kidding. I need to be I need to try and be stronger rather than wishing I was somebody else but being too shy and scared and resigned to even try to change. I want to make an effort. Okay. Oh. I tried to recall Emmeline. Oh, I see the bruises on her neck now. Oh. Oh, cool. Wow. <laughs> Were they there before, and I just didn't notice it until now? I tried to recall Emmeline now, her soft curls, her softer lips, and the purple bruises that stood out starkly against her pale skin. Oh yeah, now you remember them. But these attributes feel like, like little more than a list. They're not real to me anymore, as they once were, because I can't see them. I might never see them again. Not now. She's not now she's passed on to the other side, wherever that may be. Uh, you'd think seeing a ghost than being possessed by her departed lover would leave more of a lasting impression, but I guess not. Life continues to go on. Even Emmeline and Cornelia, whose lives have ended, moved on. I need to keep moving on. I need to keep going. I need to keep on going, too. I haven't told anybody about what I saw. Who, wouldn't, who would believe me? They'd all think I was delusional. I'm half tempted to believe what I might... What I might, what I saw might be a delusion too, but if it, fuck, I can't talk. If, if it were it not for the memories that still linger ghost-like at the back of my brain. The large lake at the Linton's estate. The taste of raspberry lemonade in the long, luxurious summers. Fingers against my skin, running through my hair, tracing patterns against my collarbone. The sensation of lips against my own, but they were not mine. Look at that long hair, though. Jeez, okay. They were Cornelia's, and these are her memories, and I have no business clinging onto them like this. But I can't help myself. When she put possess me our beings merged I hold within me all of what all of what she did in duplicate sepia tinted yes but they're but still they're nevertheless these borrowed mem these borrowed memories are already starting to slip away piece by piece dispersing into my dreams whenever I close my eyes at night but they're not gone yet if I close my eyes and wrinkle my brow and concentrate as hard as I can I can bring these images to the forefront of my mind once more I know what it feels like to be kissed on the forehead, the nose, the cheeks, the neck, the lips, by the girl I love, but I've never been kissed before, not truly. It makes me curious, what would it feel like? I glance at Haiti from beneath my lashes. She notices in my flush. Is there something wrong? Do I have something on my face? N n no, that's not it. I'm just thinking. Of what? 
A memory. Two young girls stretched in the rain, startled by the sudden downpour. One of them laughs, delighted. The other sighs, wringing out her hair. They bicker back and forth until they appear to reach some kind of truce. The cold embrace, with damp clothes and damp bodies. Oh! Fingers run through hair, teasing out lank locks. Brushing raindrops away from the from pale cheeks, lips meet together, their mouths are hot. Okay! It's not my memory, it's not something I should be remembering. I should try to forget it. I ignore it. But I can't. Hedy, I... Yes, what is it? I, I wasn't joking, Hedy. I am... Um, I really do think you're pretty, you know? You're being weirdly and sentimental today. You haven't been diagnosed with a terminal illness, have you? Terminal disease, have you? What? No, why would you think that? Because you're being more imp impulsive lately. Taking more chances. Isn't that what people do when they find out they're going to die soon? Or when they win the lottery? Hedy frowns. Hey, Toma, if you've won the lottery and haven't, you haven't told me, I'd be really annoyed. I want those five pounds back now, with interest. <laughs> I start to laugh and give Haiti a small push. She almost overbalances, overbalances, but she's able to write herself at the last moment. Of course I haven't won the lottery. I'm not even old enough to buy a ticket. And the terminal disease? No, I don't have a terminal disease. At least I don't think I do. I frown nearly serious, my nose wrinkling. Is it really that weird that I want to pay you a compliment? She isn't trying to brush me off because she's feeling awkward, is, it, is she? I don't want to make Katie unco un uncomfortable. She's one of my only friends. She, that's why I didn't tell her how I felt. Even when I found myself thinking of her at odd moments and missing her when she wasn't around. I didn't want her to abandon me. I still don't. But if it's Haiti, I should try to have more faith. I've never had any faith in myself, but she's remained my friend for almost a decade, longer than half my life. I don't think she'd like me any less if I told her how I felt. She might think it's a little strange, and she might not understand, but I don't really understand it either. Maybe I don't need to. I don't know if Emmeline or Corn and Cornelia did. Why does everything have to happen, o happen for a reason? Why can't things just happen? We humans think too much, all of us, so we become our own worst enemies, always planning and preparing, but never advancing. I'm tired of that. Spurred on by the memories of Emmeline and Cornelia, I'm able to gather my courage. It's still small, weak, and there isn't much of it, but it's mine all the same, and it matters. I matter. My feelings matter. Haiti, I, uh, I, um, I look at my lap, my, light, my face light pink. My voice sticks in my throat for a moment, but it is only for a moment. I don't want to back down now. I, I, I've liked you for a while. Maybe for, for a few months. Or maybe longer. I don't know. I mean, I, um, I think, well, maybe. I like you more, as more than a friend. And you think this is, you might think this is strange, but, well, I'm sorry. I'm a strange person. You should be, so you should be used to it. There's a small silence broken only by the sound of falling rain. I can hear my heart beating inside my chest underneath my skirt. My shirt. My skirt. My shirt. Woo! My skirt! Woo! Wow! I didn't know I was hoary. What does she think? What kind of expression is she making? I want to lift my head to see, but at the same time I'm scared. Though I managed to confess that that doesn't mean I'm not afraid. I'm more afraid than ever, but it feels like a weight has been lifted from my chest. And that makes me think this was all worthwhile. Even if nothing else comes of this, I'm satisfied. I don't need anything anymore. I don't need anything more. That's what I try to tell myself, but... Uh, these thoughts vanish as soon as I feel soft, warm sensation envelop my right hand. Haiti? Oh my god, yes! <laughs> It's all right. I mean, I know you're strange. That's why I like you. You don't need to apologize for it. Uh, so, d does that mean you... Yeah, I like you too, Toma. Oh, You do? She nods. But you... 
You're always reading those old romance stories, so I, th I thought you'd prefer Mr. Darcy or um, Mr. Rochester. I like romance stories because they're stories. Grumpy old men aren't, my re aren't really my thing. Aren't girls much prettier? Oh my god, yes. That's definitely true. Wow! I, I like girls more too. At least I think I do. The words are wavering, I'm sure, but the pressure of Hades' fingers around mine is comforting and helps to calm my heartbeat. I could get used to this. I want to make memories like this, lots and lots of memories, all my own, just for me. This confession might be a bit understated, but my, bit <coughs> understated. my emotions reveal that a grotty bus stop on an overcast day spattered with rain, but that's all right with me. It's not like the love that blossomed between Cornelia and Emmeline on, the sum on summer days by the lake, sipping on raspberry lemonade, but why should it be? This is my life, and I'll live it like I want, goddammit! The past is interesting, and I'm thankful for all my relatives who, be who came before me, who made me who I am. But that is all they did. They shouldn't influence how I act as well. Anxious, shy, tenative, but nevertheless determined. I dip, I tip my head and press my lips against Hades. Aw. The rain around me continues to fall, drumming against the roof of the bus shelter. The two of us sit there, silently sharing our first kiss, waiting for a bus that might never come. I hope it doesn't. I want this moment to last forever. Team in the lock, first kiss, cute. We don't get to see it? We don't get to see it? We don't get to see it? How? How dare they? They don't let us see it. Oh, well, I think that's actually... Is there anything else? There's nothing else, right? What's this? Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's it. Wait, was this the extra scene? Right? Was that the extra extra scene? Oh! 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 Um... Well, I actually... This will... I'll, I'll like to play this the next episode, actually. So that's cool. Um... Anyway, guys. <laughs> that being said, if you guys enjoyed this episode of the sad story of Emmeline Birds and would like to see more of this game, this, this, this extra scene, then leave a like down below, leave a... Like... Oh, fuck. Leave a like down below, leave a comment down below, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't, ring that notification bell, and remember, die safely. Bye bye! I just hit my hand. Ah, kill me!